right, we got some having some fun today with the Aventura and the thrust test. We've done that before, but we got an 80 inch prop coming, which is going to give it a lot more thrust, but we don't have it yet, so we're going to do it with the propeller we've had on this airplane. Um, got my new scale all calibrated. It's got a little remote control. I don't know why, but you have to use the remote in order to hit the lock button, and that gives you the ability to uh, uh, get in the plane and run it and uh, have the peak thrust being picked up by the scale. So I had the airplane chopped to zero the scale, and then I let it roll forward. So now it's already pulling off a few pounds. just saw out there with this uh, power and torque chart we have it overlaid here uh, it's, it also shows the the UL engine but we're not looking at that today um, we're looking at the power and torque of the of the Viking 130 so the red curve is the torque and the blue is the horsepower now they cross pretty much right there okay so if we go down that line that's uh, like 2175 prop RPM, okay? So 2175 prop RPM, we uh, put that in our calculator, 2175, and then we times it by the ratio of the gearbox, 2.33, and we get a prop RPM of 5,067. So very close to the 5,100 we had, um, but we're not in cruise, you know, we're, we're taken off. So if we want that available, meaning where the power and torque, horsepower and torque meet, if we want that in cruise, we're gonna have to sacrifice some thrust so we can get a real nice cross country airplane. But still, we wanna be above um, you know, the Rotax powered uh, Aventura. So I'd say we're going to lower the RPM until we get the thrust down from like almost 600 to about 500 because that's what uh, uh, 912 is actually able to put out like 430, 400. And now it's super easy to do the, uh, you know, take a couple of degrees in and put more degrees in with this uh, little square cube thing. You get a bunch of these now on Amazon and stuff, so you just turn it on and, uh, and just put it on the, on the prop hub and uh, basically any flat spot and hold it steady and then hit zero and it'll calibrate to zero. We'll do it one more time. And then you just put it to the tip of the blade. Make sure you put it exactly in the same spot every time. Uh, I'm going to measure these stripes and see if they're all the same and then 
Uh, if they are, I'll use that spot. And right now I've got, at that location, it's 8.5 degrees. So I'm gonna need 10 and a half degrees. So if I tilt it more into the wind, like if I bring this down, I get more. So I'm gonna twist the blade for 10 and a half and do that to all three blades. What? All right, I got directions of how to film myself. Don't don't go up. It gives me double chin. But I'm having a conversation with with me and my scale here. Uh, just to add to that video we just did. Uh, what you saw, I'm I'm gonna post this to um, you know, so kind of like all, everyone gets to see this because it, it definitely is something that sport aviation hasn't seen before. Uh, even our, our Zenit uh, builders, which we have a lot of, and, uh, you know, Aventura, uh, no matter what you fly. Basically, what you see in this uh, presentation is an engine where you can add three degrees of pitch and only lose, uh, you know, 40, 50 pounds of thrust, which is pretty much unheard of. If you go back and look at that torque chart uh, that I'm showing somewhere in this video, either before or after, I'm not sure now, you'll see that the torque is very, very flat for, uh, um, you know, pretty much all of the crews and, and max power in the engine. And that's due to the variable valve timing, the variable valve lift on the intakes and all that kind of stuff. And anyone that tells you that, you know, we don't need any of that in a modern uh, airplane engine, uh, they're not telling you the truth. They just aren't. You know, the, the Viking 130 has become so popular because you can actually cruise at very low RPM. You can lose very little performance by going down in the RPM and not have to go to like 5800 like you have in the Rotax and engines that are designed for a higher RPM. That's not, you know, saying that the Honda isn't designed for high RPM, like up to 6000 RPM as far as it's uh, design and what it can handle but as you see from me doing this uh, increase in pitch uh, you can actually see a little bit when I did that last run you could see that the the airplane is shakes a little bit and that's the balance between having so much pitch in the prop that it's cavitating a little bit on the high pitch section of the blade but that of course will go away if you're not doing a static run if the airplane's accelerating down the runway or off the water so uh, uh, excited about the performance, excited that we didn't lose any more than, uh, than what we did by um, increasing, or I mean, increasing pitch, decreasing RPM. And obviously now the airplane's gonna accelerate, probably have a cruise speed around 100, but we'll see what, uh, that's just a, a gut feeling. We'll see what Alex says when he flies it. All right, so we got a couple more degrees in it. Get this so zeroed out got a full plane tied down let's start it up i'll get a little bit of power on here make sure this is at idle and crank it okay so we're ready what kind of RPM we get now. We got put almost three degrees in it. It's got 11, 11 and something degrees in the prop right now. Let's see what we get for RPM.
right, so we got 13 degrees at the tips. Uh, went up from eight and a half. That seems like a lot, but we've still got 540 pounds of thrust and you can also feel that the inboard section of the blade is stalling slightly. Uh, as you can see, the blade has a lot of twist to it. Um, so a tiny bit of stall inboard is, uh, as soon as you start accelerating over the ground or, or down the water, that blade will unstall itself and um, it should give good thrust for takeoff. So we'll see what this does. Can't wait to see Alex fly it.